I'm just off the St. Field Road, I'm just opposite Forest Side here, and this is uh, Purdy's Hill. And just above me here on the hill, dominating the landscape, is Knockbreda Parish Church. And its associated graveyard below it. And this church has been here for some, for some considerable time. But the old graveyard up around the church is very, very interesting. And it is ancient. It's one of the oldest graveyards in the city. And it ranks alongside the city cemetery, Clifton Street and Friars Bush as must-see graveyards because it's full of history. This is Nogbreda Parish Church and the old graveyard around it. And this is the notice board and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it but I'll, I'll run the, the camera over it and you can pause it and read it all for yourself. It's uh, quite a fashionable place to, uh, to be buried in. And some of the leading, uh, the leading lights <coughs> uh, filling graves in uh, Nockbreda Parish Church Cemetery are people like Waddell Cunningham, Merchant, Robert Shipboy McAdam, there's a the name, uh, exported pumping machines, passionate champion of the Irish language, he, although he was Protestant, and here's, here's the main man, Charles, Sir Charles Lanyon, responsible for, I don't know, so many of the buildings, uh, prestigious buildings in Belfast, and here's another boy, Samuel Needson, influential member of the Revolutionary Society of United Irishmen. And there's like so many United Irishmen leaders, they were all Protestant, they were all Presbyterians. And a lot of them were hung. Well here we are in the graveyard. Um, someone uh, said the, uh, the niceties of social standing extended into the afterlife. So if you were uh, you were a big wig, if you were of the great and the good, then uh, you might have chosen to be buried in uh, Knockbreda Parish Church graveyard. Um, and this graveyard is is like a it's like a, an open air museum. It's got uh, art, it's got sculpture, it's got uh, ornate carvings, it's got history, all telling of a bygone age. And uh, you know, walking round the graveyard, I am so surprised to see uh, the inscriptions. Uh, now normally whenever I go into a, a cemetery, you know, the, the older inscriptions are, are faded and, and uh, you can't read them. But these ones actually are quite clear. And they, a lot of them date from the, uh, the 1800s. And I, I just find this remarkable. And uh, this uh, graveyard, as you might uh, have, have worked out, is uh, remarkable for the, the uh, mausoleum uh, structures that it has. And here's a grave uh, dating from uh, 1811, and the earliest grave record that they have here is of someone who was buried in 1763. The church itself was uh, consecrated, as I said, uh, 1737. And here's some of the, the big um, mausoleums. 
Now here's a, 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 a headstone, a gothic style headstone that I am delighted to have found. This is the family burying place of Sir Charles Lanyon. And this is the, uh, the burial place of uh, the Gird Woods. And um, you, you can't read the inscription on there, but uh, there's reference in one of the, the, the internet uh, articles I was reading about uh, one of them who died in 1900 at Mafeking. Uh, and uh, another one who died in Cleardorp, South Africa in 1902, killed in action. The graveyard wasn't always like this. Uh, most of these um, graves had uh, railings around them. You see those railings in between here? Oh yes, this is uh, the Martin grave. See the, the height of those grave, uh, graveyard railings, those, were, those encompassed every uh, grave and uh, unfortunately someone in their wisdom several years ago decided to take all the, the railings down and they also uh, decided to uh, knock down two of the uh, mausoleum uh, because they were in a bit of a dilapidated state. But the, the Follies Trust would have, would have sorted that out because they have done so with these uh, remaining structures. This man uh, was a captain, he, James McElroy, and he's lost at sea. February 1805. And she was the widow of Lieutenant William Swinney of the 90th Regiment of Foot. Died 1828 aged 44 and another one uh, Captain Jamie McElroy who departed this life 1852 so there's there's military men there's doctors there's there's uh, there's architects there's there's policemen there's uh, there's merchants there's well-to-do families all here and there's also just normal uh, ordinary nine to fives like myself. A lot of, um, I'm noticing as I go around here, a lot of uh, infant deaths recorded. And I like this uh, headstone here. Let me read it to you. In memory of John Jordan McIntyre, by a few companions, as a mark of the esteem he was held in by them as a friend and brother, he was aged 18. Wonder what happened to him. Youthful, youthful reader, passing by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so you will be, therefore prepare to follow me. And he's telling the reader to prepare to follow me. Now if there is a God in heaven, well then you've got to prepare to meet him. If there's not, if we're all just uh, arrived here by some a big cosmic accident, then you have no worries. But it seems to me, it seems to me that if there's a watch, there has to be a watchmaker. If there's a world, there has to be a world maker. <laughs>